First story. I accused my wife of cheating, refused to listen to anything, and kicked her out of my house, believing my brother's false claims. Now he confessed the truth out of guilt, and my ex-wife moved on to finding someone, and I'm living every day in agony, still parents forcing me to reconcile with my brother, because he is sorry and family. I met my ex-wife Kelly when we were in college, when she asked me for some notes one day. We had been sitting next to each other for weeks without a word until then. We started dating and got serious pretty quickly, which upset my younger brother Robert. Robert was about 16 when I started dating Kelly, and you could tell that he had a bad crush. She was always nice and took it in stride. After Robert left home and got into college, I let him move in with us. Kelly and I had been together for about three years, living together for two. We all had a good relationship. Kelly started complaining things were misplaced soon. One of her earrings would disappear, as would her pants. Sometimes it was socks. She was under a ton of stress, changing medications. So we both chalked it up to her ADHD giving her an issue until one day. I caught my brother with a pair of her missing pants. We found everything he stole. We kick him out. And he goes to live with my parents again and begs for forgiveness and decides to go to therapy. It takes about five years. But we all decide it was water under the bridge, Kelly included. Robert had a hard life growing up. He said it was all acting out. Late 2022, I received an anonymous email that Kelly was cheating on me. He knew dates, she was out of town, names of co-workers, and everything. That gave me no photographs, but knew enough details that I was sure they were telling the truth. Kelly fought me on it, denied it, begged for marriage counseling. But cheating is a solid dealbreaker for me. Robert came to stay with me as my emotional support while Kelly was there. Kelly had asked me to get him to leave multiple times, stating that he was watching her and making her feel uncomfortable. But all I said were things I'd rather not repeat about her not being trustworthy. The day she left last April, she said to me that it was going to turn out to be my pervert brother, and that if it is, she hopes I feel every ounce of pain I just put her through. My brother has apparently been racked with guilt and confessed last weekend. He told me in front of our parents. I couldn't say anything. I just walked out and went home. I turned my personal phone off, and I've just been walking in a daze. I go to work, come home, I watch TV, and I go to bed. I can't tell you what I've eaten for the past week or what I've watched. My dad came by to talk to me tonight, and he wants me to talk to my brother. Tell him that it's going to be okay, and we can work through it. I turned on my personal phone for the first time to see hundreds of texts from my brother. I just want to reach out to Kelly and beg for forgiveness and ask her if we can start over. Comments Lushflower Not to kick you when you're down, but your soon-to-be ex-wife warned you. And it sounds like your parents support him still, even though he's blown up your relationship twice and terrorized your wife for years. You all made choices, and now you're going to have to live with them. You should tell her she was right so she can have validation, but don't expect understanding, forgiveness, or reconciliation. She's better off away from you and your toxic family, especially that psycho stalker brother of yours. Update I contacted my ex-wife. Three days later. I vented on Reddit about finding out that my brother faked that my wife had an affair on a business trip. I'd been in a daze since I found out. I kept reading that everyone said leave Kelly alone. But I sent her an email to where we had been communicating about little things that popped up. And then I went to bed. I apologized and told her that I know I can't mend things. But that she was right and that Robert was out of my life, and probably my parents, too. I didn't expect an email back, but I received one, and it was massive. It was filled with a lot of personal things that I don't want to repeat. She said she understood the desire to listen to that email, but that she wasn't even able to defend herself, that I just gave her time to get out, and then immediately moved Robert into our home, where she watched him intentionally keep us from communicating as she was forced to leave. She said she would have done anything let me talk to her co-workers. Check her geo-tracking but Robert kept a permanent buffer, and I allowed it, belittling and mocking her along with him, whenever she attempted to talk to me. She thanked me for the closure on this chapter of her life, and she wished me the best, but she asked me not to contact her again, ever. After the year and three months, she said she endured. She isn't the same woman I knew. She asked me to set the record straight with any former mutual acquaintances, but she honestly never wants to hear from any of them either, and to tell them so. She told me I poisoned that well when I accused her of what I did, and it was the most bitter and isolating experience she's ever dealt with, and that she genuinely feels nothing for anyone in her former life, including me. She also told me cutting out Robert is a great idea, but don't cut them off trying to get her back, 
or even in her good graces, because she is moving overseas on a fiancé visa to try things out with her new fiancé. She said they've only been dating for eight months, but she's never felt this way about anyone in her life, and that she thinks he might be her soulmate. She told me to learn from my mistakes with her, and to find someone to love more than I loved her. It crushed me to see the word, soulmate. She used to tell me all the time she thought I was her soulmate. I called my dad yesterday morning after reading the email, and I told him that I am not going to comfort Robert. He ended my marriage through lies, made me a liar to all of my friends, and isolated and hurt one of the most loving, loyal people on the planet who tried so many times to help him. My relationship with Robert is over, and I told him that if he has a problem with that, my relationship with him is over, too. My dad told me he understood truly how bad it was once I broke it down that way. I'm going to put in a transfer request at work tomorrow. I live on the West Coast. Maybe I'll head to the East Coast. I'm going to get a change in scenery, a therapist, and figure myself out. Comments. Zestiklosigi 8765. I'm glad she found her soulmate. I hope she can heal from the pain you put her through. Much recording 19444. The saddest part is that you would have still thought she had cheated had your psycho brother not confessed. You never believed her word or gave her a chance to defend herself. You dragged her name through the mud, and she was living in isolation while her community believed her to be a trash person. You were happy in burning down her world, and this is part of your guilt. It's not her responsibility to help you assuage your guilt or conscience. She was kind enough to give you closure, even though you didn't deserve any of it. Your life will probably stink for a while, and karma coming back to receive its due is always a possibility. For now, try to work on what led to this. If you find yourself in a future relationship, tread with caution and work on communication and genuine trust. I'm glad your ex is happy. She deserves to be loved, cherished, and given her place as a partner. That includes safety and security, which you failed to provide. Good luck, OP. Visible Arachnid 8790. I'm sorry, OP. But Robert didn't end your marriage. You did. Robert was not even part of the marriage. Who made the vow? Who promised each other for better or for worse? Everything that happened in your life was because of your choices. You should take accountability for the choices you made. At least you know what to do in your next relationship. Next time, do it right. Rainbow underscore bell. Yeah, like seriously, who believes that SHT without proof? Robert had no proof, just his words, and OP ate it up. Didn't let his ex-wife defend herself. He definitely dealt the blow that killed his marriage. Second story. I 27M just found out my girlfriend 24F is lying about being on a trip. Is there any hope, or am I cooked? My girlfriend Amy and I went on our first date around 1.5 years ago took things slowly while being exclusive, and have been officially dating for one year. Overall the relationship has been pretty good, minus some small hiccups in communication that she chalks up to her neurodivergence. Amy isn't great with texting, which I thought was a red flag at first until I found out she's like that with almost everyone most of her friends and family included. To give a little background, Amy and a few of her girlfriends go to this conference a few states over twice per year. It's a two-day event, which they usually turn into a five-day vacation because it requires a flight and hotel, and is in a nice city. Amy's friend group is typically very active on social media during these trips, posting on their Instagram story at all points flights, conferences, beaches, etc. This weekend was supposed to be their third time attending. Amy and her friends have had their flights and hotels booked for a few months, confirmed by some of their posts on social media, being excited about having everything booked. Unfortunately, the conference was cancelled, but they already booked everything so they decided to still enjoy a vacation. My girlfriend and I had a date night last weekend. She was telling me how excited she was for her trip. All was good, but at the end of the date, I caught a glimpse of Amy's phone. She was on her airline app, and it looked like she was reading cancellation policies. We had a long day, and I was tired and felt like I was snooping being nosy, so I didn't say anything. During the week, I asked Amy to hang out the day before the flight, emphasizing that I wanted to see her before her trip. Unfortunately, she was meeting up with her group of coworker friends, so she couldn't. No worries. The morning of her flight, I texted her, wishing her a safe flight and happy trip, and she liked my message. We haven't talked since. As I said, she's not a big texter, so we usually don't text much besides planning dates and in emergencies. I figured she was on her trip, so I haven't texted to plan a date. Now on to the meat of the issue. Amy is now supposed to be a few days into her trip and I noticed none of her friends were posting on Instagram. 
I thought that was weird because they usually post a lot. But I shrugged it off. That was until tonight. Amy started posting videos of her at a show. It looked fun, and I didn't think twice about it. Until the ending, where the show host called out, thank you. And then the name of the major city nearby where we live approximately 30 minute drive. I looked up the name of the show. And of course, it was in that nearby city, this weekend. Meaning she wasn't on that vacation after all, and never thought to say anything to me about it. I did a little snooping on Venmo, and found out that over two weeks ago Amy's friend paid her back the money that Amy had sent her for the hotel and car rental. So she's known the trip was cancelled for two weeks, and hasn't said anything to me every time I brought it up. Where do I go from here? I feel like I'm suddenly spiraling, going crazy overthinking everything lately to see if I've missed any signs. I've already started assuming the worst, and I'm panicking. I'm out of town for the weekend, and I feel like this has totally thrown off my trip. Is this worth a conversation? Or is the relationship already over? Is there any reason she would not have said something by now? Even if she tells me the trip was cancelled right when I see her before I confront her, would that still justify not telling me until after the trip? Please, any advice is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Edit. Her best friend just uploaded a picture of them together during the show. So I know she wasn't there with some other guy. But that doesn't explain the lying. Comments. Trish. I don't see any justification for lying to your face. Repeatedly. Aren't you angry? That's not okay. OP yay. Of course I am. Sorry if that didn't come across. I tried to stay level-headed in the post and just lay out the facts. I'm kind of going through the stages of grief right now. Anger being one of them. And on throwaway 072023. Sure, it seems like she pretended the trip was happening to do. Something else. With someone else. That's your worst case assumption, right? If so, what's her plan? Keep pretending she went. Keep you in the dark. Hope no friend outs her. Pretty stupid. If she's seeing someone else, she should just dump you. OP yay, that's my assumption. I don't really see any other reason why she would have pretended the trip was still planned. Even if I misunderstood the timeline of the trip getting cancelled. Like if that Venmo payment was for something else. I'd assume she would have told me when I texted her the morning of her flight. Bloof underscore ponder underscore smudge. I take it she wants to get caught since she's posting the videos. Or is she just dumb? OP. I considered that maybe she's trying to get me to dump her. Which would make sense. But she's been talking about celebrating my birthday soon. Planning a getaway trip together, etc. It'd be weird that she's trying to put in effort and plan future things while wanting to get dumped. But I don't know. Everything's so confusing. Bloof underscore ponder underscore smudge. Very confusing. I wish I could help you. The only thing to say is to talk to her when you see her again. But can you trust anything she tells you? Clearly, she's deceitful. I've no idea how to move forward with this. Sorry. OP yay. I have no idea if I'll be able to trust any of what she says. I don't really know what help I'm looking for anymore here. I guess I was just praying there's some perspective I wasn't seeing. Thanks for your input anyway. I really appreciate it. Update. Two weeks later. Hey everyone. I had some DMs asking for an update. So here it is. To quickly summarize my last post. A few weeks back. My girlfriend was supposed to go on a trip. A few states away to go to a conference. I came to find out that the conference was cancelled, and she didn't actually go and never even bothered to tell me. She lied by omission about it by not telling me when I texted her to have a good flight. I found out she didn't go because her best friend posted a picture of them at a show in our local nearby city. So here we are, almost a month later. I was wreck and spiraling these past few weeks, and after being together for almost two years, I was too panicked to reach out and ask to see her. During the three weeks since her planned trip, she hasn't reached out once to me. That was until yesterday, when she casually reached out like we hadn't just ignored each other for three weeks and asked to see a movie. So I just finally saw her tonight. In the car, I asked about her trip. Her facial response was really weird, like she got caught off guard. I'm guessing she was expecting me to forget about it after a few weeks of not seeing her. She just said, it was okay, which instantly confirmed my suspicions. I asked her what she had done. And she said she went to that conference one day, which, as I said in my last post, was cancelled and went to a show after before returning home the day after I made my original post. I asked her which, and she claimed the show was in our local city. I was driving at the time, and it was dark out, so I waited to confront her, as I didn't want to get emotional and endanger us. I confronted her for lying about the trip, doubling down and lying about the conference, and tripling down to lie about the show. 
Her immediate response was to start deflecting, saying that if this is making me upset, imagine how she felt that her conference and trip were cancelled. She said how she was so heartbroken and upset that the conference was cancelled, which was cancelled five weeks ago, that she didn't want to talk about it. She kept saying that she doesn't owe it to me or anybody else to tell us about her business and what's going on in her life. I of course called her out for gaslighting me, to which her response was that she was not gaslighting me. Kind of ironic, I guessed. When I talked about how it made me feel, and that she damaged my trust for her, she again tried to belittle my feelings by rolling her eyes and saying that it was only a show. This conversation ended up opening to a much bigger issue in our relationship that I didn't mention in my last post. Generally, Amy treated me really poorly throughout the relationship. She was hot and cold, put zero effort into communication, and it never felt like she made a priority. She'd give me zero affection or compliments despite drooling and crushing over male celebrities all day. She's made little effort to connect me and her family and friends. We've talked about all of this a few times now. She would always say she was overwhelmed with some new excuse and promise it would get better. I would cave in and agree to work through things. As expected, things never got better. This time was the same, where she blamed a new job for being overwhelmed. And that's why she's been so distant. But this time was different. I guess her blatant lie to my face and your guy's comments in the back of my mind gave me power to put my foot down. I broke up with her then and there. She kept begging me for one more chance, to think on it for a few days, that she cares about me and didn't intend to hurt me, all that nonsense. But the whole time I was the one bawling, and there wasn't a tear on her face. It really broke my heart breaking things, but I've also really grown to hate myself for putting up with her treatment for so long. I'm hurting a lot right now, and I'm scared to get back into the dating world after two years of aging and some weight gain. I really loved her with every bit of my heart and I'm terrified to picture my life without her. I really want to call her up and give her one final chance to get things right, but I know I'd never forgive myself if she didn't change and broke my heart again. I'm hurting badly, and I could really use some words of encouragement right now. Thank you all. Comments. Ad Creative 8850. Baby, you don't deserve this. Don't let this beast of a woman back into your life. The day is young, and your youth has just begun. There are so many beautiful faces and souls you have yet to meet. There are so many opportunities that await you. And the future only asks that you let go of your past. Bloof underscore ponder underscore smudge. I know that you're hurting right now. But I have to say this. Her being gone is a positive, not a negative. Don't be afraid to take some time for yourself before diving back into the dating pool. Assistance Yacht 3D669. You're only 27. Everyone ages. Weight gain. The gym is a great outlet for frustrations as well as a motivator. You dodged a bullet. You were able to stand up for yourself and put your foot down when she tried to gaslight you into believing that you were in any way shape or form guilty. That is the first leap in a great direction. Plain Adhesiveness 29 Yeah man, I'm 38 and about to be 39. I met my now wife after separating from my ex at 33 and had kids at 35. You aren't even close to old. Join a gym, start a fitness routine, and go out into the world. You don't need to start dating, and in fact, it sounds like you could use time to yourself first, since you are having these feelings of low self-esteem. You deserve someone who shows you the same affection you give them. Don't settle for less. By Squickmania. Yep. I met my partner at 46. A few years ago. There is always time. It may not be exactly what you want, but it will be what you may need. Live, grow, and be happy. Good things will come to you. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friend.